The movie opens up with a scene dating back to 2000 BC in Canaan, where the Lord calls Abraham to sacrifice his only son Isaac as a burnt offering on the mountain of Moriah. Bidding goodbye to his wife Sarah, Abraham takes two of his servants, Kelzar, the son of the chief servant Eliezer of Damascus, and Eshkelon, a Palestine, with him and Isaac. Forty years earlier, in 2040 BC, Abraham, then as Abram, tells his wife Sarah, then as Sarai, that he sees the Lord God, who instructs him to go to a land the Lord God will show him, and promises to make of him a great nation, leaving his home, or caused him. Much of the movie follows Abraham, Isaac, and the servants on the road, filled with many flashbacks that fill us in on the story of Abraham and his first encounter with God, in which he receives God's promise all the way to Isaac's birth. To summarize things, the flashbacks, or the episodes, basically reflect various episodes taken from scripture, which do not do much in terms of advancing the plot, with some exceptions. The goal of all the flashbacks is to establish Abraham's frame of mind and all that he has been through. One thing worth noting is Abraham's complete and solid trust in God, and Sarai functioning as his spiritual antagonist, expressing doubt and anger at God. In the present, on the road to Hebron, the group encounters several Pelishtime guards of Abimelech, king of Pelisheth. The Pelishtimes leave the group alone after Abraham reveals himself as Abram, who was acquainted with King Abimelech. At camp, Abraham tells the event of how he leads his shepherds to defeat the kings from Shinar in the east, saving Sodomite captives, which include Abraham's family. Abraham also discusses the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah due to the wickedness of the group. Throughout the journey, Abraham recalls the Lord's promise of land and descendants and how Sarai advises Abram to go to Egypt during a famine. Approaching Hebron, Abraham remembers the Lord's covenant with him of a son as an heir. Abraham reminisces how he tells Sarai the Lord's covenant with him, leading to Abram sleeping with Sarai's Egyptian maid Hagar to bear children at Sarai's request, and Hagar being pregnant and then giving birth to Ishmael, Abram's firstborn son, at Hebron, creating contention between Abram, Sarai, and Hagar. At night, after talking over the symbol of sacrifices, the holiness of God, being blind to sin, faith, his experience of God, the penalty of death, and God's mind, ways, thoughts, and purpose with the group, Abraham bargains with the Lord to take his life, not Isaac's. Entering Ephrathah, Abraham recounts the Pelishtimes taking Sarah into the harem of King Abimelech, and how the Lord plagues both the house and the people of Abimelech, thus giving back Sarah to Abraham and repaying with wealth and servants. Following Eshkelon's animosity towards Abraham and Kelzar's intervention, the group confronts the Pelishtime guards again, who ask for tithes and then leave them injuring both Abraham and Isaac. On the ground, Abraham reminisces about meeting with three visitors from the Lord, renaming Abram to Abraham and Sarai to Sarah, promising him a child named Isaac. Over the course of the movie, you also notice a lot of campfire conversations between Abraham and his servants, and it is in these scenes where Abraham lectures Eskalum on faith and speeches that sound quite reminiscent of a standard Protestant evangelism tract, for instance, he explains God's holiness, spiritual blindness, man's sinfulness, how we cannot please God through our deeds, and etc. At one point, Kelazar gets mad at Eshkelum for interrupting Abraham and disrespecting him, instead of being grateful for having a master who knows the true God. The entire squabble reaches a boiling point, and Kelazar has to physically restrain him and tie him up. One thing that the movie seemingly forgot was to return to the story of the servants after Abraham goes up to Moriah. Arriving at Moriah, Abraham takes Isaac with him to the mountain. Isaac asks Abraham where the lamb is, to which Abraham responds of the Lord God's provision. Looking back to Sarah's pregnancy to Isaac and Isaac's birth, Abraham reveals to Isaac that Isaac is the sacrifice. Isaac reluctantly complies with Abraham, and Abraham binds Isaac. As Abraham is about to sacrifice Isaac, the Lord tells Abraham to spare Isaac, and Abraham sees a ram as a substitute for sacrifice. Abraham then declares the Lord will provide. The Lord repeats his promise to Abraham, as Abraham has not withheld Isaac from the Lord. The portrayal of Abraham is another topic of discussion, because although Abraham waxes eloquently on how all men are sinful and bound apart from the grace of God, the film portrays him as essentially perfect. It's the type of simplistic portrayal of the Old Testament you'd expect to find in a bad children's Bible. The only sin of Abraham that the film portrays is his decision to take Hagar as a second wife. 
and the film suggests that Sarah is mostly to blame, since she pushes him to do it despite his multiple protests. The film noticeably omits episodes in which Abraham is clearly the one in the wrong, like when he gives Sarah to Pharaoh in order to save his own sin. Abraham is also portrayed as having almost all the answers theologically. He lectures on theological topics as if he attended a modern evangelical seminary. There's very little sense of a need for progressive revelation. His only son falls into a common pitfall of Christian films. It's so concerned with delivering a theologically correct evangelistic message that it puts large chunks of evangelistic messaging onto the lips of the character in a manner that feels contrived and untrue to the historical position of the characters. There's very little effort to reckon with Abraham's position in redemptive history. There's also no reason why Abraham would be explaining these concepts to his servants now. If they've been living with him since birth, surely he's had plenty of time to explain these things. There's also very little effort to portray Eskelum and Sarai, these spiritual antagonists, in a sympathetic manner. Even though they give Abraham pushback, they're always portrayed in a negative light, even though they do raise some legitimate and troubling points. The movie ends by flashing forward to 2,000 years later, in 30 AD, Jesus' crucifixion and the Roman centurion at the cross, acknowledging the crucified Jesus as the Son of God. The story of the sacrifice of Isaac is an interesting story concept, what would you do if God asked you to sacrifice your only child? The question has intrigued Christian writers for centuries, but a story requires more than an interesting concept. It requires thoughtful structure, engaging conflict, and good pacing. Unfortunately, his only son fails to deliver these other important aspects of good storytelling. Part of the problem is that there isn't much for Abraham and his company to do. They're just traveling on a road with relatively few obstacles to overcome. Another part of the problem is that the film is marketed to an audience that already knows the story quite well. The film tries to create tension through Eshkelum's questions and growing frustration, but it's hard to feel that invested given how black and white the film's treatment of the characters is. Another element that contributes to the plotting feel is the tone and the music. There is simply little to no variety in that department. A movie of this genre has to deliver on that, as it needs to have an emotional variety. There are scenes where the music is somber and solemn, making us experience a monotonous feel. Not everything is bad with this film, though. Abraham is, of course, an incredibly important figure in God's story of redemption. That isn't because he led a perfect life. Like all of us, he's flawed. But he was a man of faith, a man who maintained hope in God's promise. His only son portrays this sense of enduring trust and hope extremely well. It's an emotional film that readily helps viewers connect Abraham's many-faceted story to God's sacrificial plan for our atonement. The only real drawback here is the director's choice to have a younger actor play the elder Abraham, who was well over 100 when called upon to make his momentous trek to Mount Moriah. The truth is, there is solemnity and grace in true age, especially when the aged are faced with struggling for godly insight, and that's extremely difficult to portray on screen, no matter how much makeup is worn. That said, this is still a solid film designed to give believers and unbelievers alike some thoughtful biblical insights for the Easter season.